Germany, Italy, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Istanbul mobilized its army and waited. Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany had offered military assistance to Enver Pasha and the Ottoman army. Guns, ammunition, and equipment. He also sent German officers to train the empire's soldiers. After war broke out on the continent, the Ottoman army reported increased activity by Armenian rebels. From Paris, the Hinchok party proclaimed that the entire Armenian nation, waving the sword of revolution in their hands, would enter the World War. The First World War broke out in Europe in August 1914. At the time, there was no reason to suppose that the Ottoman Empire would be a part of it or that the Middle East would be involved in it. It was a European affair and not a Middle Eastern one. But um, as, a, as a sort of accident, the Ottoman Empire did come, come into the war. Uh, and though I say an accident, in a sense it was not an accident because it was the, the work of a uh, uh, very talented conspirator and plotter, Enver Pasha, the minister of war in the Young Turk government of the Ottoman Empire. Enver Pasha found a way to get into the war. On October 29, 1914, Ottoman warships bombarded several Russian cities on the Black Sea coast. Enver soon devised a plan to attack Russian forces in the Caucasus region. It was a fatal mistake in judgment. In December 1914, the Third Ottoman Army, 95,000 men, began to advance against the Russians. In the mountains of eastern Anatolia and the Caucasus, winters were harsh. Deep snow, freezing temperatures, and rugged landscape. The Ottoman troops, poorly equipped for a winter campaign, followed their orders and marched into a great disaster. At a remote part of the empire, known as Sarakumush, Ottoman troops fought their first major battle of the war. The Third Army attempted to surround the enemy, but the Russians broke out and counterattacked. The campaign was an absolute disaster for the Ottoman forces. Out of 95,000 men, only 18,000 returned to Erzurum in January 1915. And if Armenian nationalists in Van can see these scarecrow troops coming back, their uniforms in rags, you know, with their arms in slings, uh, the shadow of an army that had gone to attack the Russians, the Armenians in Van must have thought, right, well, look, you know, let's do it now, because the Turks are finished. And what, of course, is very remarkable about this country, which observers of the Balkan Wars have noted, the Turks are not finished. They're actually at their best when they've got their backs to the wall. And the British discovered this when they landed in Gallipoli, expecting it to be a pushover, expected to be in Constantinople in half an hour. On April 25th, 1915, Australian and New Zealand forces landed at Gallipoli on the western side of the Dardanelles Straits. They hoped to capture the capital of Istanbul and take the Ottoman Empire out of the war. The Allies underestimated the influence of German military training and equipment, overseen by General Lehmann von Sanders. Nor had they counted on the brilliant Ottoman defense of Gallipoli, led by Colonel Mustafa Kemal. The invaders fought a losing battle for an entire year, trying in vain to gain a foothold and push on to Istanbul. More than 150,000 Allied troops were killed, wounded, or died from disease. Although the Ottomans lost a quarter of a million men, they held their ground and Istanbul was saved. While Ottoman forces beat back an invasion in the west, the Russians drove forward into eastern Anatolia. Fighting alongside them were thousands of Armenian volunteers. The rebels focused their attack on the city of Van. They intended to make it the capital of their new nation. 
their opportunity had finally come, strengthened and financed by Russia. Armenian rebels welcomed the Russian attack. The historian Louise Nalbandian wrote that Armenian revolutionary committees considered the most opportune time to start a general rebellion was when the Ottoman Empire was engaged in war. Van was an important city, an important center for the Armenians. And uh, some of the Armenians in 18th and 19th centuries uh, made plans to establish an Armenian state in the Ottoman Empire in Eastern Anatolia under the uh, Russian rule or Russian protectorate and one was going to be center of that state. By April 20th, 1915, the Armenians had taken over a large part of the city. A small force of Ottoman soldiers and policemen, led by Governor Jevdet Bey, fought a hopeless delaying action. The battle raged on for nearly a month. Finally, the Ottoman forces withdrew on May 17th. Van fell to the Armenians. As Russians continued their advance into eastern Anatolia, the Armenian rebels set fire to the Muslim quarter of Van. Aram Manukian became the new mayor. According to German observer Johannes Lepsius, the Armenians immediately began to slaughter Muslims. When the Russians arrived in Van on May 19th, they were horrified to find the streets filled with corpses of Muslim civilians. Thousands of men, women, and children cut down by the Armenian rebels. With the exception of two mosques, the entire Muslim part of the city had been utterly destroyed. The Russians, supported by Armenian volunteers, pushed on throughout the spring of 1915 with little resistance. The Ottoman troops were in full retreat from the Russians and could not protect the civilian population from Armenian attacks. One of the rebel leaders, Hamparsum Boyachian, declared, all Turkish children also should be killed as they form a danger to the Armenian nation. The local Armenians rise and they carried out a, a massacre of, you know, of the local Muslims. The five volunteer Armenian regiments had uh, gone over the border and started massacring all the Muslims in sight. And the idea is the straightforward one of ethnic cleansing. You know, if you terrify people, you wipe out villages, then everybody will panic for miles around and run away. This is the theory behind it. At this site, near the village of Zeve, not far from Van, about 2,500 unarmed civilians were massacred by Armenian rebels. They were driven into this natural bowl area and cut down with rifles and machine guns. The civilians could not escape the murderous gunfire of Armenians positioned on the heights above. At Akdamar Island, Muslims fleeing from the horrors around Lake Van sought refuge. But Armenian rebels were waiting and slaughtered their victims without mercy. This Armenian church was the final image seen by many of the Muslims who died there. With rebels in open revolt across eastern Anatolia, the Ottoman government decided to relocate about one-third of the Armenian population to other towns and areas outside the war zone. Istanbul made it clear that Armenian lives and property were to be protected. One decree stated, this order is entirely intended against the extension of the Armenian Revolutionary Committees. Therefore, do not execute it in such a manner 